the test. That's just the name of what we're doing. Okay? Yes. These are your notes from yesterday continued. Okay? Okay, so here is the plan for today, just so you can kind of have an idea. So we're going to finish your first derivative test notes, and then I'm going to give you a little bit of time to work on the partner quiz, um, or on the take-home quiz that you got as you came in. Okay? That's the yellow sheet, Sam says take-home quiz. So it's due on Friday, but you'll have time in class to work on it in case you have questions. Okay? Uh, yes. The packet from last week, yes. So you'll have three due this week. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Okay, listen. Listen. Okay, three things are going to be due on Friday. The homework that you got last week, that's going to be due on Friday. You have videos online to help you with it if you need help. Also, tutorials all the time. Okay, then your homework that you got today. Okay, today's Wednesday, so you have till Friday on that if you need help. Okay, then we're, we're going to do some of it in class. Okay, then your take-home quiz, it's one question. You can look at your notes to help you with it, but you're going to have time in class today. Okay? So those are the three things. Uh, take-home quiz, homework 14, homework 15, due on Friday. About what? I just said it's all due on Friday. I probably just said it three times to be obnoxious. Okay, so are you ready? What do we do first? Okay, I'm going to write little steps over here in case you forgot. You're going to find f prime of x. You are going to set f prime of x equal to zero or undefined. What are those points that you find called? Critical numbers, very good. Okay, those critical numbers are important because they go on the number line for your interval test. And then after your interval test, remember you're going to identify your relative or local, relative slash local, min and max values. Okay? So those are the steps that we learned yesterday. We only got through two examples, so we're going to finish those now. So step number one is to find f prime. What rule am I going to need to use to take the derivative? Product. Great. So this is my u, this is my v. u is e to the x, v is 4x cubed. What is u prime? e to the x again. What is v prime? 12x squared. Okay, from there I'm going to take the derivative, f prime of x. Remember, product rule, you do one diagonal plus the other. So it'd be e to the x times 4x cubed plus e to the x times 12x squared. Is it wrong if you wrote them backwards? No, doesn't matter. It's plus. It's commutative. Okay, then I'm going to take my derivative. I'm going to set it equal to 0 or undefined if it had a denominator, but since it doesn't, we're not worrying about that right now. These are going to be called the critical numbers. So set it equal to zero. What can I take out of both of those terms? e to the x and? Okay, good. So 4x squared e to the x times. Let's see what's left over. I already had my e to the x taken out. I already had my 4 taken out, but it was an x cubed. I took out an x squared. What's left over? Just an x. Okay, second term, I had a plus 12, I'm taking out a 4, plus 3. Now notice my e is gone, my x squared is gone because they were GCF to the front. Okay, from there, let's write our critical numbers. Okay, when 4x squared is GCF to the front, what x value goes with that when it's outside? 0. Will e to the x ever equal 0? 
No, so I don't get an extra answer from that. But what about x plus 3? What will make that 0? Negative 3. So I got two critical numbers. Then remember yesterday we learned you set up a number line. Negative 3 and 0 go on the number line. And then I'm going to choose a test point on each subinterval to check what the sign is. If the sign is positive or if the sign is negative. Okay? So what is a number bigger than 0? F prime of 1. Now let me also remind you that you are always plugging in to the factored form right here. So this is where I'm going to be plugging in my 1. So it'll be 4 times 1 squared times e to the 1 times 1 plus 3. Now remember, I do not care about the number. I only care about whether the value is positive or negative. What is 4 times 1 squared, positive or negative? What is e to the 1? What is 1 plus 3? What is a positive times a positive times a positive? So my interval to the right of 0 is positive. Remember that if f prime is positive, that's the slope, then f is increasing. So when f prime is positive, that tells me that f is increasing. Next subinterval between 0 and negative 3, what could I pick? Negative 1, perfect. I'd have 4 times negative 1 squared times e to the negative 1 times negative 1 plus 3. What is negative 1 squared? Positive. What about e to the anything? Still positive. What about negative 1 plus 3? Positive. 3 positives multiply to a positive result, which means that my f is still increasing. Now, let me address the e part real quick because sometimes people get confused on that. If this is e to the negative 1, is that the same as 1 over e? Yes. Do you see why it's not negative? 1 divided by e is still positive. It's a decimal, but it's still a positive decimal because you're just moving e to 1 over e. So that doesn't turn it negative. It just makes it a smaller number. Okay? Mm -hmm. And 1 divided by 2 would be about a half. It would be positive, though. Okay, last one. Less than negative 3, what can I pick? Okay. Negative 4 squared e to the negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3. Okay, negative 4 squared, what is it? Positive. What about e to the negative 4? Positive. What is that the same as? 1 over e to the 4. So no negatives in there. It's just on the bottom. Okay, what about here, though? Positive, positive, negative, overall negative. And if f prime is negative, what was f doing? Decreasing. Okay, label your mins and maxes on your number line. Which type do I have at negative 3? Min. Because my graph goes from decreasing to increasing, what happens at zero? Neither. Okay, very good. Now we're going to practice writing out what your answer would look like on the AP test most likely. So you would say there is a relative or a local minimum at x equals negative 3 because f prime of x changes from negative to positive. What would I say at zero? I would say there is neither at x equals zero because f prime of x does not change sign. Now also remember that we learned yesterday that if it changed from positive to negative, instead of calling it a minimum, we would call it a what? Relative or local maximum, okay? So the way it changes matters. Questions about that are good. So if the sign change in your sign chart went from plus to minus, uh -huh. It would go from increasing to decreasing, uh -huh. so you would call it a maximum uh -huh. instead of a minimum. Okay? 
All right, are we ready for the next example, or do we have questions? Okay. Um, I have two more for you, then we're going to look at the homework a little bit, okay? So, next one is going to be 2x plus 8 to the 5th. 2x plus 8 to the 5th times 2x. Okay? So kind of the same story here, right? What rule are we using? Product rule. Okay, go ahead and set it up. But this time your product rule is also going to have a little chain rule in it. Okay? So my u is going to be 2x plus 8 to the 5th. My v is going to be just a 2x. So my u prime is going to be what? 5 comes down to the front. What's the new power? 4. And then what's the chain rule part times by what? Where did 2 come from? The derivative of the inside. Very good. What is my v prime if v is just a 2x? Just a 2. Very good. So then the first thing that I label is that I've found the derivative f prime of x. I'm going to write this diagonal first, but you could write either diagonal first, doesn't matter. So it would be 2x plus 8 times 2, and then fifth power on that, plus. Now on this next term, I'm going to go ahead and times all the random numbers together. So what is 5 times 2, and then can we times 10 by 2x? How many is that? 20x and then 2x plus 8 to the fourth power. Are we all good with that? So all of the pink circly things got combined. Set it equal to zero. Think about what you could factor out. Do they both have a constant in front I could take out? A 2. And then do they also both have something else in common? How many 2x plus 8s? to the fourth power. I can't take all of them out, but I can take four of them out. Out of my fifth power, what's left over? One of the 2x plus 8s. And then out of my 20x, I divided a 2 out, but what's still left over? A 10x. Now, are any of my 2x plus 8s left over? No. Nope, because I took all four of them out. Now, inside there, is there anything else I can combine? Yeah, the 2x and the 10x is how many? Okay, we're almost done here. So 2x plus 8 to the 4th, that'd be 12x plus 8. Okay, now let's talk about, you could factor out of this bracket a what? 4, good. So I'm going to do that. So I have 0, 2, 2x plus 8 to the 4th, take out a 4. 3x plus 2. Now, you could combine the 4 and the 2. That's fine. Okay, what I want to talk about is, can I GCF a 2 out of this parentheses? No. Okay, yes and no. If you do it, you're most likely to do it wrong unless you really think about, if I want to take a 2 out, how many 2s do I have to take out? Four of them. Now, I'm going to do it, but do you have to do it? No. So look, watch. I'm going to leave this 2 alone. It's already outside. If I want to take a 2 out of this, what would be left over from my 2x plus 8? x plus 4. But if it's to the 4th power, I took out 4 of them. Because I'd have to take a 2 out of each of those 4 parentheses. Now, do I care what that number is? No. I know that there's 4 2s, but I'm going to just leave it like that. Then I also have my 4 here, my 3x plus 2 here. Okay, questions about that? Yes. So I took a 4 out of the back bracket, and I took a 2 out of the fourth power, but I had to remember there were 4 of them, because there was 1 in each of those parentheses. Okay, what are my critical numbers? That's an x plus 4. Negative 4. What's the critical number that goes with this? Two-thirds. Negative two-thirds, yes. Okay, good on that. 
So my two critical numbers would be negative 4 from this one and x equals negative 2 thirds from this one. Remember, those are our critical numbers. Those are the numbers on the number line. Now, let me go back one step. If you were like from here to here, you got confused, you would have gotten the same critical number if you'd done that. What would have happened with the plus 8? It would have turned to a minus, minus 8, then divide by 2. What do you still get? Negative. negative 4. So that's why I'm saying this step isn't wrong. If you got to here, that's fine. But if you can get it to here, it looks a little bit easier. Maybe it doesn't to you, though. Okay? All right, set up your number line. Negative 2 thirds and negative 4 are the numbers we are testing. Okay, we are plugging in to the right of negative 2 thirds. What number could we pick? One. Okay, we could pick 1. So uh, f prime of 1 equals. Okay, we're plugging in here to what I just circled. So it's some 2 crap, some more 2 crap, that's all positive. What is 1 plus 4 in here? 5 to the 4th, what's the sign on that going to be? So it's 1 plus 4 is 5, so 5 to the 4th is positive. Then I have times a 4, that's positive. And then I'm plugging in a 1 here, 3 times 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is also positive. So you have a bunch of positive crap times together. What's your end result going to be? Positive. Now, if F prime is positive, what does that tell us about F? It was increasing. Very good. What is a number between negative 2 thirds and negative 4? Okay, negative 1. So I'd have 2 times 2 to the 4th, that's positive. Then I'd have negative 1 plus 4 to the 4th power times 4, negative 3 plus 2. Okay? Because I just, I don't care what this number is. If it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, then it's positive. So I'm kind of like just being lazy and just only checking the sign. Okay, now look in here. I have my positives from all the random twos. What is negative 1 plus 4? Positive. positive. Then I fourth power it. It's still positive. But then what about negative 3 plus 2? Negative. negative. So I have positive, 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 negative. Overall, what is it? Negative, negative for that middle section. And if it's a negative in there, it's going down. Okay, then for my last one, let's say I pick negative 5. I'd have all my random twos here in the front. I'd have negative 5 plus 4 to the fourth, and then negative 5 plus 2. What's my sign in here? Negative, but it's to the fourth power. What's going to happen? It's going to turn positive. What about negative 5 plus 2? Negative. So it's positive, 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 negative. Overall, negative. Did I have a sign change then at negative 4? Did I have a sign change? No, so it's a min max or neither? Neither. What about at negative 2 thirds? Min. Got it? Um, a max would have to change from a plus to a minus. Yeah? Okay, one more. The last one. Little quotient rule for you. Okay, f of x equals x squared plus 5 over x minus 2. Okay, then we're going to look at your homework for a bit. So, what rule are we going to need? Quotient rule. So, set up your high and your hoe. Okay, BC kids, I know y'all do this differently, but it's the same answer in the end. Okay, so my high is the top. What's on top? Okay, my O on bottom is X minus 2. What is the derivative of the top, D high? What is de ho? 
Add derivative of x minus 2 is 1. Okay, then remember it's ho d hi minus hi d ho. So it would be 2x times x minus 2. Go ahead and label it. Minus, remember quotient rule is the subtract in the middle. And then it would be x squared plus 5 times 1. Okay, what did I do wrong that I'm going to miss points on for the AP test? Got to have those parentheses. It is wrong if you don't put them, right? Okay, then divide by ho squared is x minus 2 squared. Now, some of y'all on your CBA, and I didn't even realize people were doing this, are trying to cancel these guys. Can you do that? No, no don't do that. Okay, that violates lots of rules, so don't do it. We're going to distribute instead. What is x times 2x? 2x squared. What is 2x times minus 2? Okay. On the other side, what are we distributing? The negative sign. Yeah? So it's a minus on the x squared, then a minus on the 5. Now, before I write the denominator, I'm going to just fix the top. So what is x squared, 2x squared, if I minus an x squared? That's really just x squared minus 4x minus 5 all over x minus 2 squared. So far, so good. Okay, now, if I went back to the first page of your notes, we haven't done one like this yet, but if you look at your critical number definition, I'm going to put mine on here so you don't have to look it up. Do you remember what we said critical numbers are? Anywhere that the derivative is equal to what? Zero or undefined. So if it's zero, you set the top equal to zero. What about if you want it to be undefined? The denominator equal to zero. Remember, just like a vertical slope. So when I come over to this little fraction, I'm going to have to factor the top and the bottom. And any critical number, no matter whether it's on top or on bottom, has to go on my number line. So factor the top of that. What will multiply to 5 and subtract to negative 4? 5 and 1, which one has to be negative? 5. Reason why is because if I want to get a negative 4 in the middle, the negative had to be the bigger number, right? Okay, then on bottom, x minus 2 squared. Okay, list out your three critical numbers, yes? What are your three critical numbers? Positive 5, negative 1, those are off the top, and then what about the one from the bottom? Now, when you do your number line, make sure you put them in order. So who should be coming first? What's the smallest of those three numbers? Negative 1, then 2, then 5. So if you get critical numbers, remember that they can come from the top or the bottom. Any zeros are going to count. Okay, let's pick a number to the right of 5. Six. Now, I'm going to be lazy. I'm not going to write it down. Look right here. What is 6 minus 5? Positive. What is 6 plus 1? Positive. What is 6 minus 2? And then I square it. Still positive. Overall, what's the sign in that subinterval? Positive. If f prime is positive, what is f doing? Increasing. Very good. Okay, pick a number between 2 and 5. What can I pick? What is 3 minus 5? Negative. What is 3 plus 1? Positive. What is 3 minus 2? Positive, but then I square it. Still positive. Overall, what's a negative times a positive over a positive? Negative, which means F is decreasing. Okay, between negative 1 and 2, I'm going to pick 0. What's 0 minus 5? 0 plus 1, negative times a positive over what's 0 minus 2? Negative, but then you squared it, positive. So negative, positive, positive is negative. Was there a sign change at 2? No. Okay, last one, let's say negative 2. Negative 2 minus 5 more. Negative 2 plus 1. Negative on bottom. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, but then I square it. 
positive. Overall, what's my sign? Positive, which means that F was increasing. What type of thing do I have at negative 1? Max. What do I have at 2? Neither. What do I have at 5? Min. Got it? Yeah? Uh, well, I had to plug in a number on either side. So I plugged in negative 2 on this side. I think we plugged in 0 in the middle. Okay? So get out your homework. This is homework 15, the one you picked up on the way in. I want you to try, please. I'm going to pick a harder one, right? Because why practice the easy ones? I'd like you to try number 9, please. Number 9, please. Okay, I'll bring you a motivational candy since some of you look tired. Okay, what rule should you be using on number nine? Product rule. Very good. Also, what other rule inside it? Okay, chain rule. Correct. So you're doing number nine. If you finish number nine, then uh, try number five. Okay. I did. Okay, if 
He's not going to get a real job at Hogwarts, so he'll be a bad husband. How did you you want this? Uh, you do the one half. Make it extra three Yeah, that's all. Well, when you look at the picture, when you look at the negative one half, you touch the one half. And you were supposed to get a common denominator. Remember that quiz question? We had to get a common denominator? We were writing it everywhere. What story? Huh? too big to fit it in this tiny little space. So I'm going to write in my notes. If you want to do it in your notes and then copy it over or put in notes, that's fine. Okay, so it's x times root x plus 3, yeah? Number 9, homework 15. Okay, so it's x, x plus 3 under square root. So I'm going to need product rule. Your u should have been x, which means u prime is what? Your V should have been X plus 3 to the 1 half, which means your V prime is what? 1 half to the negative 1 half times 1. Good. Now, the 1 ends up not really mattering, but it is still there. Okay, from there, F prime of X equals, it's 1 times root x plus 3 plus x times 1 half x plus 3 to the negative 1 half. Now, you cannot do a sign chart on something like that. You need a common denominator. That's why we're doing this one together. So, I'm going to rewrite this as x plus 3 under square root plus. And then for my other term, if it's a negative 1 half, where does that square root really belong? On the bottom. So, I'm going to write it like this. Look. 1 half is going to be 1 half. Where does the x go, top or bottom? Where does the x plus 3 go? On the bottom. Now, do you remember on your partner quiz, we practiced this. You need to get a common denominator. What does the first fraction need that the second fraction has? A 2 and an x plus 3. A 2 and an x plus 3. The bottoms have to match. So in pink here, I am trying to get a common denominator. Denominator. Okay? So we're getting a common denominator. So on the top now, this is what I have. 2 times, what is root x plus 3 times another root x plus 3? 2 times x plus 3. Plus, on the other one, what was on top? Just an x over 2x plus 3. Now, I'm going to go ahead and simplify the top a little bit more. What is 2 times x? 2x plus how many? 6. So I have 2x plus 6 plus another x, mm -hmm, which is really 3x plus 6. And then for my final factor, what can I take out of the top? If it's a 3x plus 6, I can take out a 3. What would that leave behind? x plus 2. What did I have on the bottom? Good. Okay, so this was a couple steps to get to that final answer. Now, keep in mind... Are they going to put a million of these on the AP test? No. Might they put one? Sure. That's why we're practicing it. Okay? But most of them will not take that long. Now, from here, do I have a critical number on the top? Yes. What is it? Okay. Critical numbers. I got negative 2 from the top. Do I also get a critical number from the bottom? Yes. yes. X plus 3 gives me negative 3. Set up your number line chart. Negative 3, then negative 2. Okay, I'm going to start with a positive number. I'm just going to pick 0. 
On top, what is 0 plus 2? Okay, positive 2. On bottom, what's 0 plus 3? And the square root of a positive number is still positive. Overall, what is the sign? Positive. If f prime is positive, what is f doing? Increasing. Okay, between negative 2 and negative 3, I'm going to pick negative 2 and a half. Question? No? Okay, on top, what is negative 2 and a half plus 2? Negative. On bottom, what's negative two and a half plus three? Positive. Negative divided by a positive, what's the sign on that subinterval? Negative, which means f was doing what? Decreasing. Then what do I have at negative two? Minimum. Okay, then my last subinterval, say I pick negative four. What's negative four plus two on top? Negative. On bottom, What's negative 4 plus 3? Can I square root a negative number? No. Then X that entire section out. That means that that is not in the domain. So you wouldn't even worry about that interval. Basically, it just doesn't exist. So you wouldn't even look at that part of the number line because it doesn't make sense to talk about numbers that would give you an imaginary solution. You won't do any imaginaries in Calc 1 at all. Okay? All right, from there, um, what do the instructions say to do? Use first derivative test to find relative mins and maxes. So you'd say you have a relative min at x equals negative 2. Now, this does not say to justify. Okay, so I don't care if you justify. If you need to practice it, practice it. But if you feel like you'll remember how to practice it fine or it's on a test or a quiz, that's okay. Um, there's one more that I want to just look at. I don't necessarily want to do it. It's number four. Sure. Okay, take a look at number four, please. Does number four need quotient rule? There's, it literally says it on there. No, I would like for you to rewrite that so that it doesn't involve quotient rule anymore. Yes. One-fifth x to the fifth minus... And then if I did 5x over 5, what would I get for that second term? 5x over 5, what would I get for that second term? Just a 1x. Now, is that the derivative? No, that's a rewrite. Rewrite. So when I take the derivative now... I'm going to actually have to do it, okay? But right there, that's not a quotient rule because it's just a 5 on the bottom. Remember, you can split over a single denominator, okay? What would f prime be? I guess we might as well do it. What is 5 times a fifth? 1x to the what? Fourth minus, what's the derivative of just an x? 1, set that equal to 0. If it had a bottom, if it was a fraction, I would set the bottom equal to zero as well, right? But it doesn't. Okay, how can I factor that? What's the square root of x to the fourth? x squared plus one and x squared minus one. Yep, and I'm going to have to do difference of squares again because x squared minus one can split one more time. So it would be x squared plus one times x plus 1, x minus 1. Questions about that or good? Okay. What are my critical numbers? 1 and negative 1. So I'm going to just put plus or minus 1 to be kind of lazy. Now question, can this term, x squared plus 1, is that ever going to equal 0? Okay, no. If you're not sure, think about the graph. x squared looks like this and then I shift it up one. Is it ever going to hit the zero axis? No. So I only get an answer here and here. Set up your number line. What numbers go on it? Negative one and positive one. Remember you want to put them in order. Okay, let's pick a number bigger than one. Say I pick two. What is two squared plus one? Positive or negative? What's two plus one? What's two minus one? Positive, 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 overall positive. If f prime is positive, what does that tell us about f? 
Increasing, very good. Between negative one and one, what could I pick? What's zero plus one? Zero plus one. Zero minus one. Positive, positive, negative is a negative decreasing. Okay, say you pick negative two. What's negative two squared? Four plus one is positive. Negative two plus one is negative. Negative two minus one is negative. So I got a positive, negative, negative. That's a positive interval as well. Which means what happens at negative one? Max, what happens at one? Min, got it? Yes. Okay, now, we don't really have tons of time, but I want you to just work on your yellow sheet, get it started. Okay, if you have a question, you can work together with each other. It's not due till Friday, but I want to give you at least a little bit of time to start it. Okay? Uh, the take-home quiz. Just one little question. So easy. Yes. So normally I say yes, but I would give it a little I could do lunch tomorrow. If you could do lunch tomorrow. Yeah, and then y'all don't do the back of that homework. You can only do the front of it right now. Don't do the back. should the answer be? That. that. Yeah? Okay. And you can use your I 
so like one week there's like um, I'm learning the college and there's like five and then like but the main one's like and then if you put the negative in the product like what should it be? Yeah, but I'm what I'm saying is you have how many points you subtract it and you put a negative so basically, take that negative away. Uh huh. Oh, because I put it in the front of and I put it in the Yes, you can do both. You got to pick one. And then from then, I take the dy dx out. And, then I and anything that doesn't have a dy dx will switch across to the other side. Then I have to ask them for them. Then I have to be corrected. When? Tomorrow? Tonight. Sorry. After school today. Remember, it's tomorrow. Today? We'll have potatoes after school. No. It will come in the morning today, but it already happened. Oh, no. It's okay. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be here the rest of the day. Are you going on that field trip? Yeah. You can do it next week. Well, what did you get on it? I did that, I think. How about the like, 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 bad for me? That's $400. Yeah. More specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you could practice them in one day. So then just stay after it. I mean, if you got like a 40, then it'd probably take you two days. But if you got the 70, then you don't have to. I don't know how I got a 70. When I You'll this find out when you correct it. I literally thought I got a 100. And when you, when you said several students got 100, I was like, yeah, that was me. I checked my grade and I didn't get of it. There were like 500. Oh, yeah. I don't understand. Hi, y'all. Have a good day. Because the word is the end. Do you think I have a point for that? Not on the CPA. It's weird. It was 100. You might have bubbled some things wrong. You might have just made simple mistakes. But when you correct it, you'll find it. I'm sad. Wait, hold on, hold on. Or is it not part that one out. It should be two powers. Like, uh, so this one, they have you like the X, the and the other one is your U is the negative. Yeah, or, or it doesn't matter. Yeah. I have to finish my essay, so I'll give you that one. I don't know what it is. Am I going to do this? Here, switch this one. Oh, you got a sign? Yes. Are you going to be here That's why I don't in the class morning for the... I could be, yes. For test corrections? Yeah. Who else needed it? Uh, Brandon, could you come tomorrow morning? No. Why? Or you have band? Or do you have band? No. We're leaving five in the morning. Oh, I do have... Okay. Uh, Tuesday is fine. Yes, I'll come tomorrow morning. Like 8.30? Okay. Yeah. What did you get on that? Uh, I didn't do so well. I did like uh, six and a half. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was bringing one forward. Normally, I would say really yes, really but I have to go pick up the mop. Is there really that much stuff? Because fourth is my off period. Okay. Do you have a point six? Because I usually don't do anything. You should have a point six. Sure. Um, tomorrow, after school, I have a volunteering to do. I completely okay. forgot about it. Can I come through the fourth thing tomorrow? The gates. The limit test. Say, yeah, that's right. Are you doing the elementary thing at the elementary school? Yeah. 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 Hours. You're the officer. <laughs> How many hours is it? No, it's more like mid. Because I need to do hours. I'm not I also volunteer. Thankful you have plenty of time to get them done. Yeah. I also volunteer to do like the tutoring thing with the algebra uh, one. But I'm like, what do algebra one students know? Theoretically, I should be fine because I'm in calculus. But I'm like, I no, it's like slope graphing lines. Yeah. Finding x and y intercepts of lines. They haven't even covered quadratics yet. Oh, really? Or, I mean, if they have, they barely started it. Because, like, I saw, like, Mr. Winsoff, and I'm like, it's just, like, basic, like, finding x, and I'm like, I can't do that. I don't know what the equations. I don't know what the equations over work. Bye. I was like, oh, God, I hope I don't mess anything up for them. But I need the hours, so I'm like, sorry, kids. Yeah, but it's like, you got it. Oh man, I left the video on the whole time. <laughs>